and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we've got a very, very interesting puzzle uh, to have a look at. It's called A Different Kind of Magic, and it's by Mixo. And I've just read the rules to this one before I turned on the webcam. And the first thing that strikes me is that Mark is a funny creature. I mean, many of you will know that already. Um, but this... This is such an extraordinary conception that it's one of those ones where I, I almost wish I'd been sent to open this live on camera because when I first read the rules, I was like, no, no, that's that's that just cannot be the case. Um, and, and the simple, I say simple, I mean, it's anything but simple. The basic idea is these red cages in the grid are all magic squares. And a magic square, of course, is a square in which those three digits add up to the same as those three digits add up to the same as those three. Each of these columns adds up to the same and those two diagonals add up to the same number. And the, I'm used to the concept or the concept of a magic square in Sudoku before. In a normal Sudoku grid you can uh, you can create a magic square in a three by three box but in these magic squares digits can repeat and every single one of the sort of normal three by three boxes is a magic square in this puzzle. So it feels almost like a discovery, doesn't it? I mean, it's, it's sort of Mixo has discovered a configuration of a grid. Um, and we've got irregular Sudoku as well. I mean, a different kind of magic indeed. But this this is one of those that I, I, I am... I'm going to be really fascinated. I hope I can solve it because I, I want to. I want to know what the final grid looks like, um, because this this does feel a bit magical to me that this can even exist. Anyway, that is that is for later in the video when I get to have a go at the puzzle. What else can I tell you about before we do that? Um, well, over on Patreon, if you like your cryptic crossword content, and I will say only if you like your cryptic crossword content there is a three hour nine minute video of me doing battle with a puzzle called late arrival by Aragon from the listener crossword series now the listener crossword is not meant to be a puzzle uh, you know, it's not, not like a times crossword where you can do it in a few minutes they are meant to take a long time um that one does take a long time, but it is an absolutely incredible puzzle so if you've ever wondered about how to do a listener crossword that video might be for you because I do explain how you, know, how you can use various computer aided techniques to help solve the puzzle. So that is over there if you're a patron of the channel. I hope you enjoy it. The people who've been commenting on it so far do seem to like it, so fingers crossed. Um, oh, also, I wanted to just alert you to yesterday's puzzle. You must try this puzzle if you haven't tried it already. I hope, hopefully, that's that's on the screen there. It's called Gravity by M Nasty 2. And I keep thinking of different ways to interpret this rule set. The, the way I thought about it uh, earlier on, have you ever played Connect 4? And you know once you finish Connect 4, you sort of, you remove that, the, the, the bottom of the grid and, and all the tiles fall out. Well, that's a bit like what happens in, in, in Gravity. You, you imagine the bottom of the Sudoku grid has fallen out and all the clues fall down. And it's a bit like Tetris as well, because they all sort of fall down and compress themselves as much as they possibly can. It is an amazing, amazing idea, a true innovation, and you must have a go at that puzzle if you haven't had a chance to have a go at it already. You will enjoy it. Um, a couple of announcements. Let's start with big, big, big congratulations to Bernhard and Kirsten, two great friends of the channel. I even helped with the proposal uh, for their marriage. Um, and they have, they've just had a baby boy, a beautiful baby boy called Paul. Um, so many, many congratulations to the two of them. Uh, we are delighted for you. Uh, and in fact, speaking of young viewers, I have a young birthday to do today for Xander. Now, Xander, you've just turned two. I think today is your birthday. Your dad, Brendan, wrote to us and told us that it was your birthday and you have started to watch the channel at the, well, younger than two, I guess. And um, I'm I'm referred to as Sudoku Man in the Xander household. Well, I'll tell you this, Xander, people have called me a lot worse. So, uh, Xander, I hope you're able to have a brilliant, brilliant birthday today. And I hope, you get, I hope you're allowed some chocolate cake. Um, and then also, I'd like to just shout out Cyborg. 
over there in Poland. Your story, uh, well, it touched a chord with me, Cyborg, um, and you take care of yourself, my friend. Keep cracking, keep trying the puzzles. Um, occupying our brains is good. That, that's, that's my only suggestion. Um, and then I've got more correct solvers. If you're a patron of the channel, hopefully you've been having a go at Alice uh, in Sudoku Land. Alice's Adventures in Sudoku Land, the brand new Patreon reward. It's a Sudoku hunt consisting of 12 puzzles. Uh, the feedback that we've been getting so far has been tremendous. And well done to the following who have solved all 12 puzzles. Thomas Sylvester, Capitecki, Eric Maxwell, Anthony Anderson, Ryan Walker, Frank Levinson, Niels Natterstad, I think, uh, John Reed, Brett Gator, Mew Rocks, Ken LaRue, I'm going to go for actually, um, Jeff Frank, Stuart Tierney, Monica Reese, Joe Chang, Matt Boss, Ozzy Carl, and Vincent Vermal. Very well solved, one and all. Now, let me read you the rules of a different kind of magic by Mixo um, and you will get to hear what we've got to do. So our job today is to place the digits one to nine exactly once each in every row, column and thick outlined region. So you can see, oh, hang on, I'm on that. I need to go back to this. Um, so you can see that, for example, is a nine cell region made up of the sort of dark black lines that's another one there that looks like there's another one there so we've got to put the digits one to nine into each of those as well as into each row and each column as usual um, digits separated by a white dot have a difference of the indicated number so this is a bit different those two squares have to have a difference of four so if this was a one this would have to be a five if it's a two that would have to be a six etc um, and digits separated by a black dot have a ratio of the indicated number. Now there's only two black dots. So I think what we're being told here is imagine that was a one, this would have to be a three to make sure these are in a three to one ratio. But if, it, but if on the other hand, we knew that was a three, then that could be a nine or a one. We wouldn't know which it was. Um, so that's how the black dots work. And then we get the kicker. All cages are magic squares. In a magic square, all rows, columns, and length three diagonals sum to the same total. Digits may repeat in magic squares. So that is absolutely fascinating. I've already explained that, so I'm not going to explain this again. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. As usual, I have no idea how hard this is. I'm guessing hard, <laughs> but, uh, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And okay. I am sort of tempted to pencil mark these ratio three black dots actually, because you could never put a four on them, could you? Because four times four in a ratio of three with anything is 12 or a, or a fraction, and that's not going to be of any use. So you can, we could have one three, whoopsie, we could have one, well, one three is certainly legitimate. Two six, I suppose is legitimate. Uh, nine as well because nine can accompany the three okay no actually this was perhaps not as good as I thought I might be able to get that down to a quadruple okay but we do know one of these is two six don't we because because if we're using the numbers if we use the number one or the number nine its partner is always three so three is on one of these for certain and then the other one is going to be a 2-6 pair. Okay. Um, I don't know how to pencil that, really. <laughs> there is definitely a 2, a 2, a 3, and a 6 in those four squares. But that's, that's not going to be enough, is it? Um, so, what is this going to be? And we can repeat digits in the magic square. I'm just trying to work out. I don't think I can do my normal maths. In normal Sudoku, we can we can say that because of the secret, um, and the secret being that any complete region of a Sudoku adds to 45, we can sort of say things about the magic square's composition. 
that digit and that digit have got to be the same by a regular Sudoku. So because in this region here, um, you can see that this cell, where does it go in row one? It can't repeat in its own region, so it's got to go in the corner there. So those two digits are the same, and they are in a magic square, but they're not in the same row, column, or diagonal, so I don't think that's important, is it? The same is true there. That, squ that square and that square have to be the same, and they are on the diagonal together. Um, why does that make me want to make this blue? <laughs> I don't know why it does, but for some reason my brain is saying that I can make this blue, but I don't understand why my brain is saying that. Why are you saying that, brain? I, I can see, actually, that that cell... I don't know what this cell is. I'm going to just make it purple for the sake of argument. But that being purple forces that cell and that cell to be the same uh, another digit. Uh, let's make it yellow. because And that's because in a magic square, th those three cells must sum to the same as those three cells. So this, by making that purple, I mean, we, it doesn't matter what color we make it, but you can see that purple plus blue and purple must plus blue are common to both that sum and that sum, so these digits must be the same. Oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> all right. So now, now on this diagonal, we have a little. We we can extend this slightly. This is blue. This is blue. I've done it. Okay, that is so weird that that's what my brain was telling me. But but look, I can now actually prove this is blue. This yellow digit plus that blue digit plus what is is equal to the total for this box i don't know if it's helpful to sort of draw in these you know all of the patterns that have to exist all of these all of those lines i've just drawn have to have the same total in a magic square that's that's quite a pretty thing to do i'd quite like to leave that in but i'm not going to so you can see that we know that yellow plus blue plus purple is whatever the total is for this magic square. Well, that's yellow plus blue. So in extending it down to this corner, that cell must be, you've guessed it, purple. And now, yellow, yellow plus purple plus blue is the magic total, so that is blue. Which means that's yellow by the power of, we know it's blue, yellow, purple, and that's purple. There we go. <laughs> so this one is speculable. We have speckled it with the power of speckleage. And right, well, here's an, here is a modestly interesting point. I now know this is not one or nine because there is no way. If we make all of those digits one, we're saying that those three digits must also add up to three and that will not work. Uh, there'll be an awful lot of ones repeating in this region, for example. So that's not one, and by the same token, it's not nine, because if those add up to 27, those three cells would all have to be nine as well, and we get repeated nines in row one. Now, can we do better than that? We've very nearly done very well here. If this is, surely it can't be two. If it's two, the magic total is six. Ah, no, that doesn't work, because if it's if it if we try and make that row add up to six, how do we do that keeping these two digits four apart? The minimum they could be would be a one five pair. One plus five plus two is eight. It's not six. So there we go. We've done it. <laughs> this is not two, which means that. Oh, no, no. Hang on. No, I'm wrong. Well, I'm not. I'm sort of wrong. I was forgetting that the ratio, the ratio was between two and six. So I thought I was going to be able to prove that this was, this was effectively a two six pair. But I was thinking in my brain that by getting it to being a three or a six, I'd done done the same thing. I was about to write a three six pair in here, but that's total nonsense, isn't it? This, in fact, this digit can still be an awful lot of things. The only thing it can't be is three. 
because three wouldn't go with with this in a with three or six in a, in a ratio i think it can be anything else if that's three that could be one or nine. Oh no it can't it can't be six either can it it can't be three or six so it's it's one two or nine so okay so those squares are all three or six right so we know that the we know that the total the magic squ sort of square total here is either three lots of three which is nine or three lots of six which is 18 but those two digits oh i see so they if this is three to make these add up to um something well to make these this these three digits add up to nine we need those two digits to add up to six and to be four apart so they'd have to be a one five pair if this is 18 so that's a six so these two have to add up to 12 with the digits being four apart so they would be four eight so these squares are all ones fours fives and eight so this square is a one four five or eight and that's leading into this square, which oh, that's got a horrible lump. That's got a lot of options, I think. Hmm. Right. OK, but presumably I can. I say presumably uh, what I'm thinking is if I make that digit red which, and obviously I don't know what red is but am I not able then to say both of those digits become the same number I think I am because though that total must be the same as that within this three by three magic box so those two cells become the same so is that does that mean that's orange or is that wrong now it's really powerful it's really powerful to think about the diagonals green plus orange plus red we know in that row is the correct number so that must be red and now that so this is orange it is the same okay so right this i hadn't appreciated this at all but what we're effectively able to do for all of these magic squares is well maybe not for all of them but for ones where we can use the geometry of the of the irregular cages to force two of the digits to be the same we can always find another digit in the square where we can force um equality between two other cells and then we can sort of just fill the square in so now those three are the same oh my phone is buzzing at me that's Mark. I wonder what he wants. Um, uh, I don't know. I better not focus on that. I'm trying to do the puzzle, Mark. Um, okay. So, can I do anything with this now? This is uh, the geometry is a bit different. That one was on the diagonal, which was going to repeat. This one isn't. So I want to say, I really don't want to say this can be a one. Can it really be a one? If it's a one, that's a three, that's a six, and that's a two. But if it's a one, that's a one, that's a one. That's a three. No, it doesn't, that doesn't work, does it? If that's a one, because that's a three, but orange becomes three as well, doesn't it? By, because of this dot. And that's going to put a three there. And I'm going to have two threes in that row. So that's not right. Okay, so this is not one. Which mean, it doesn't mean that's not three. If this is two, that's got to be four. Which means the magic total for this box will be twelve. So we get two, four, six, which would make this three over here. Hmm. I don't 
don't know. I don't know how to do this quite. I'm not sure if it's... What about if I put this... If this is 9, that becomes 7, 7, 7, 7, 21. Twenty-one. That's again. I can't quite see how to do this. <laughs> Can I do this one now? These are all. Ah. Okay. Yes. Ah. I see. Yes. I can do this one. That's the point, isn't it? That's the point. It's not this one at all. It's this one. Right. I think I can do this one because uh, effectively, if we look at those three digits, they've obviously got to be different. Those three digits have to be different, but by Sudoku, whatever goes in those three squares goes in those three and those three, because in each of these rows, we have a yellow, purple, blue, green, red, and orange digit. And it's the same for row two, same. So these three digits, let's make them... Uh, let's make them A, B, and C. A, whoopsie, A, B, C. So if these are A, B, C, I've got to put A, B, and C in here, and A, B, and C in there. Well, I think, therefore, yeah, doesn't that mean that each of these little regions has to have A, B, and C in it? Yes, it does. Because, because this, this box's constituents are only made up of A, B, and C, effectively, whoopsie, 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 um, those are A, B, and C. And now that being C, forces, you've guessed it, this is actually C. So that's C, that's C, let's put big letters in. There's got to be an A, B, C triple here. So A goes there, which makes that B, that A. We get another triple on this diagonal. Um, that's C and that's B. Oh, I've just realised I've got rid of my pencil marks here, which was very silly of me. Oopsie. Can I can I remedy that somehow? I probably can actually. Let's let's stay with low little digits. So that was C, wasn't it? Uh, that must be B by the power of Sudoku. That must be a B. So we get this. So A is on the other side of a three ratio from this thing, which is presumably very important. All we've got to do is to work out why. <laughs> um, so if that's a three, this could be, no, this can't be one. Oh, this can't be three. Right, that's beautiful. This can't be three, because if this is if this is three, this has to be one or nine. But the magic total for that diagonal, therefore, is either going to be three or twenty-seven, and you can't make those three digits add up to three if you've made those add up to three, and you can't make those add up to twenty-seven if you've made those add up to twenty-seven. So this is not three, and therefore seems to have to be six. So if this is six, this is two. Oh, but I thought two didn't two didn't work in this one, did it? Hang on, hang on. I thought two was impossible. Oh, I see. No, it's fine. It's fine. Two is impossible in this one, but it was only impossible because of this one, one, this four clue in the middle of this. So two is possible in this one. This is beautiful. So this has got to be six. This has got to be two. All of those become two. And the reason I paused is that obviously three twos are six. And I was thinking that's, it feels too low, but it's fine actually, isn't it? We can just put ones and threes into all of these. Well, well not that one. I need to make that one uh, one or three. And now, oh, well, that's not two or six anymore then. So this is three or nine. One of, the, one of these is definitely a three. We know that because we can't put one and nine in here. So that one, which is C, is now one. So C is one, which is that one and that one, which means B is, there we go, <laughs> and that's nine. And the, the six is over here, come on. So this is 18, this has now got to be a four, eight pair. 
um, in order to be mathematically correct. This has got to be a 4-8 pair. All of these become 4s and 8s. We're going to know what the digits are over there in box box our magic square number 1. 5, 7 and... Oh, you rotten thing. Well, okay. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I was about to say 5, 7 and 9 and we don't know what's on the dot. But we do actually, don't we? We do. Because... What we've got to do here, well, A, firstly, that's not 9. Everything here is 5, 7, or 9. So that digit must be 7. We can see that that digit cannot be. If this digit was 5, we know the magic total here is 21 because it's 5 plus 7 plus 9. So we need something on the diagonal that equates, that, that basically divides 21 by 3. So that's going to be 7. These squares are all now not 7, but we know that red is 9. We know green is 5. And somehow... Okay, so presumably this is how we're going to differentiate purple and yellow in this box. Ah, that's got to go lower, because if we go up, we get to 10. So that's a 3. Hmm, one second while I just stare at this for a moment or two. Oh, I see, I see, right, hang on. That looks like a region to me. So those squares are four, six, and eight in the middle magic square. Now, I'm just gonna be, we've got to be a bit careful here. I'm seeing all sorts of things. I'm now noticing that in all of the magic squares that Mixo has made, this is true. This is very interesting design. In each magic square, three regions, exactly three regions, are contributing exactly three cells. So I now wonder whether this pattern is basically going to just repeat everywhere. Well, I bet you that's what happens, but I don't know how to just, I can't just allege it, can I? Right, that digit is three different from four, which is one or seven, or three different from eight, which is five. So it's one, five, or seven. Though, right, these digits are one, two, three, four, six, and eight. So those digits are, you've guessed it, five, seven, and nine. Which it looks like it looks like this box is trying to be the same as this box. It's sleeting outside. That's very unpleasant. Um, which would make this not able to be a one. How can we prove this isn't a one? Oh, by Sudoku. By Sudoku. <laughs> I know. I don't tend to look at Sudoku very early. In this instance. Yes, that might have been an error. Those two squares, what are those? Well, by Sudoku, they're a one-two pair because they see three, four, six, and eight in the row, and they see five, seven, and nine in both of those columns, so they are a one-two pair. They just have to be. So that is not a one. This is five, seven, or nine, um, and therefore we know we're heading up towards a 21 total, don't we? Oh, well, easy. no, let's look at this one. This is easier. I, I think I can probably do that one as well, but let's think about this one because I can see how this works. Um, those squares add up to six. Those two squares add up to three. So we know we're heading towards six as our magic total in this, um, in this, this three by three box. That digit cannot be um, a one or a two because it would repeat in its region. Now, if it was anything other than three, this would add up to more than six. So this must be a one, two, three, triple. That must be the three. That must be a one or a two. Uh, each of these is a one, two, three, triple. So in this column, that must be the three. Um, and well, I suppose what we're going to have to do now is to color these cells in so that we know what's what. So. Or is it possible that I can just allege that those... Well, yeah, I mean, as we know that the magic total is six, 
I was about to say, can I just allege that this is a run of twos on this diagonal? What, well, maybe the way to think about this is to think about the middle digit. Hang on a moment, let me just think about this. So that digit, yeah, that digit has to go somewhere in row one because it's a one or a two and it doesn't go there. So it must go there. And that digit must go somewhere in row three of the magic square. So it's got to go there because it can't go under its friend. So those three are the same. They add up to the magic total of six. So they are all twos. These are all ones. And that's presumably useful somehow. He says, well, these three digits now by Sudoku are five, seven and nine. No, they're not five, seven and nine. Oh, are they? Hang on. Oh, no. Hang on. I've got to be really careful. I've got to be really careful here. That is not a Sudoku box. So I can't just look at those four, six and eight and eliminate them from there. Oh, this is playing with my brain in a bad way. Ah, OK. All right. Sorry. Um, OK, so what we've got to do instead of that, presumably, Maybe I've got to go, maybe I've got to go back to my colouring. So that digit must be in one of those three squares because that's a five, seven, nine triple. So it must be there. That digit is therefore like that, isn't it? And now we can now we can pick a, a square like this and say, okay, well, what's that digit? And we, the answer is we don't know. Let's make it uh, orange. But we do know now that because because this this digit here and this digit here are in the same sum. They are a green plus an orange plus that digit, uh, let's make it gray, have to equal the same sum. So all of a sudden those two digits have become the same number. And then we look at this diagonal and we realize that must be orange to complete that sum. We look at that diagonal, that, whoopsie, that needs a gray for the maths to work. That needs an orange for the maths to work. And that needs to be a green for the maths to work. Oh, it's very clever, this. It's really, really clever. Um, OK. And now, well, now, now we've actually proved by maths that we have got to be having five sevens and nines. So this is all four sixes and eights by Sudoku. And presumably we can do we can speclify everything again. Let's let's apply speclification. That now in what world I'm is speclification the out. same as the word it's Alexa? The there is a question that we will leave for debate. Right. So this digit by Sudoku must be that digit. That digit by Sudoku must be that digit because these three have all got to be different. So this this is where. We've got a line of rednesses along here. We know the magic total is 18. So we actually know that those squares must add to 18. So they're all sixes. There we go. That was quite easy. Um, and we can, it's probably going to be this dot, isn't it? That's going to be in some way important in a moment or two. I mean, there is a temptation here as well. Oh, hang on. No, okay, that still can be four. That no, we haven't we haven't resolved this one. We don't know which way round that goes yet. Ah, but what we have no, we we can do it just using the triplification technique again. Those three digits sum to twenty one. Those three digits have the same sum, so they are sevens. All of a sudden, greens are fives. These are nines. I was wondering how we were going to disambiguate this, but we've done it. Now, if that's five, that must be eight, which means we've got purplification there. We've got to go fours in these. And then. And then. Well, <laughs> now we're going to have to probably the easiest thing to do is to just. Uh, color this box, isn't it? So those have all got to be the same by Sudoku. Oh, terrible choice to align those, uh, align those together. We'll make those blue. So it, it might be this cell that we've got to focus on, I think. Um, but what we could do also is this. We know these are fours, sixes, and eights. 
we know these are five sevens and nines this is just sudoku on these columns I and mean, this must be ones twos and threes again so we now know the magic total for this box is six one plus two plus three so one of these diagonals has to sum to six um, which which yeah okay and yeah if we look at if we just highlight that cell for a moment in the center of it that digit in the bottom row of this one two three we know that this is a one two three triple in the bottom row that digit has to go there and now in this row it has to go there so those three cells are the same and they have to add up to six so those have to be the twos I think that I think that logic sort of applies everywhere doesn't it now what about this number that digit is not oh no it's still got all the options oh sorry I thought that was going to be completely resolved I'm genuinely shocked by that ah no right the trick is there isn't it only one of those works because the minimum digit we can put in either of those cells is four and we need a digit that's five away that must be a four nine pair i can see no other option that works in this aha so that's four nine we can get rid of all the nines there <laughs> this has still got options it could be five with one or seven with three so we don't know how that's working we do know the magic total for this magic square is 21 so one of these diagonals has to have uh, either five seven nine on it exactly or three sevens on it and this square let's highlight that square for a moment well that cannot that cannot be the same as this um, I mean, I know that those three squares are going to all be sevens. I'm just trying to prove it elegantly, and I'm probably doing a terrible job of that. Um, just, I think, yeah, I mean, it is true, isn't it? Because that digit in this row can't go there because it's in the same region. Can't go there, it's in the same column. So it does go there. And now in this sequence, it's got to go there. And now those three digits, bah, bah, right, those three digits are the same and must add up to 21. Yeah, so it is possible to do it. That does that. That gets me the five. Uh, this is all in the same region. So that's nine. That must be five, therefore. That must be nine. That must be five. This now is resolved. Five must go with one. So one and three, don't repeat a digit in that region. So that's a three, that's a one, that's a one, that's a three. And this being a four, in the bottom row, the only place for a four now is here. In this row, the only place for a four now is here. And we know the magic total in this, in this magic square is four plus six plus eight, which is 18. Um, now, we can make though that diagonal will add up to 18 naturally this diagonal can't have a four on it so the only way it can add up to 18 is if it's three sixes so it's going to have to be three sixes those are going to have to be three eights and we've just got to figure out the middle ah which is done now with this one click so there we go we've, we've, done, we've done the puzzle we've done the puzzle that is absolutely mad magical it is absolutely magical start to finish that is incredible a different kind of magic by Mixo and in fact it is three magic squares of the same type that have sort of been aligned very very cleverly using these irregular shapes so Mixo has somehow had the, 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 the foresight to say if the irregular regions contribute three digits each to the magic squares within each sort of cage, then this setup is possible. 
I mean, it's just amazing. And there's really, you know, the, the, the selection of the clues to disambiguate it are all, they don't look like they're going to do much, and yet they do absolute magic. That is, it's a very, very clever puzzle. I'm sorry if some of you are going to get upset with me because the colour scheme, I've suddenly realised, is... Um, is not consistent across the grid but there we go maybe we should highlight all the sevens on their diagonals all the twos on their diagonals and all the sixes on their diagonals just to award them pride of place there we go that's a prettier looking grid isn't it that shows really what's going on at the fundamental core of the puzzle brilliant absolutely brilliant and quite quite amazing really let me know in the comments how you got on let me know if you were able to Maybe there's some clever maths you can do and sort of appreciate this right at the start. There might be some people who get this done in sort of two minutes or something. That will be interesting to read about. Um, but I love the puzzle and I look forward to the comments, especially if they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.